Welcome to this short demonstration of how you can use leap test to automate testing of ServiceNow. Um, in this uh, very quick example, we will uh, just open ServiceNow and create a change and validate that the change has in fact been created. Uh, it's just an example of the basically unlimited ways you can automate ServiceNow uh, using leap test. And we'll begin by adding a start web browser block uh, to our case and uh, we'll use this uh, ServiceNow instance that I've had created. And the first thing we'll then do is click on the uh, login form, um, the username, um, and uh, type in a username. We'll just type in admin here. And then we will, oh, then we will click the password field. So, and add a password. And I'll just set this to be a password field and type in the password. And then finally, we will click the login button. Like so. So, here we have the beginning of a ServiceNow case that just simply performs a login, and we can we can actually just run it and see that everything is in order. A browser is uh, opened and the form is filled out and the login button is clicked. All right, so uh, with that in place, we can, uh, we can continue. And uh, once logged in to, um, to ServiceNow, the first thing we do is click on the the search uh, box in the, well, the filter navigator, it's called. Um, and then we'll type in just the word change. And as you can see, when, when we do that, most of you probably already know this, of course, um, the create new change uh, menu item appears and we just want to click that. So we'll use a click web element and click create new. And uh, well, our case is already starting to uh, to fill up, so I'm just going to uh, take this stuff and uh, collapse it a bit. We can turn it into a reusable uh, custom building block, or in this case, we can really just make it into a group, so it, it, it takes up less uh, screen space, like so. And we can call that one, oh, login, let me just put that back in place. Okay, so, um, so now we're well on the way to, to creating a change. Uh, if I click uh, here manually, we can see that in this setup, we, we have to choose between a normal standard or emergency change. And I'm just going to pick a normal change. Um, and uh, well, we can, let's, let's just run this again and see from, from the top. So again, the login form is uh, uh, filled out and now ServiceNow is, is loading and create new and click on normal change. And now we're sort of ready to fill out the change. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is, um, I'm just gonna group this, uh, ah, we'll, we'll, we'll continue for a bit and then I can group it a bit more. The first thing I want to do is uh, find uh, the change number and then uh, read that uh, from, this, uh, from this form element. So we'll find uh, the, the web element and then we'll use a get web text and we'll use something uh, interesting here. We'll take the found element where we found the change number and use that as the source element for reading uh, the text. And in this way, we, um, we have uh, the change number and we can use that later to validate that, uh, that the change was in fact created. Okay, so uh, we'll continue uh, a bit here. We will click on the short description field to fill in a title, like so. And type web text. We'll just type in uh, any random title, like um, create the mainframe, like so. Um, and uh, the last thing we want to do is just submit uh, the change. So we will go and capture the uh, the submit button. I'll just turn off capture mode 
scroll down and find the submit button, turn capture mode back on and capture it. Here we go. And so now we have uh, we have the uh, the whole chain of things that happen here. We create a new change. We can just collapse that uh, a bit. Uh, so it takes up less time again. Great. And uh, this is filling out the change and actually submitting it. Like so. And then the final step uh, in a little while would be to uh, to validate that in fact the change has been uh, properly created. So if we just run this one more time, uh, we can we can see the whole chain of, of things happening. Again, we uh, we log in, and as soon as the ServiceNow uh, page is loaded, we start creating the change. Uh, we get the, the change number, we fill in the short description, and we do the submit. And so the final step in, uh, in this little test would be to just uh, validate that in fact this change number appears in in the list, and so we uh, will do something uh, that's a little bit more advanced than what we've been doing so far. But what we'll do is we'll do a find web element, and then we will capture we'll capture well just any one of these uh, any one of these uh, change IDs, because obviously every time we run this case, a new change number will have appeared. So we'll just capture any of them. And then we'll use the edit web element uh, option so that we can look at how this uh, change ID was in fact found in the, uh, in the DOM. And as you can see, this is all happening inside uh, an iframe. So uh, this strategy for finding the change ID, the different strategies that we can use, uh, this one looks for an iframe and a class this one, in fact, uses the change ID, and that's that's quite handy. So we'll, we'll use that one. And as you can see, the strategy says it's inside an iframe with the ID of this. And inside there is a link with a text that equals CHG and then so the change number. So we'll just we'll pick this one. And instead of looking for that specific change number, we'll insert a new dynamic field. And once we, uh, we, we create this uh, uh, change, uh, we, uh, we get an extra field in the find web element and we can just use the text found from where we created the change and we'll use that to find a web element on the screen uh, that has this exact change number that was just created. And if we can find that, we'll say that the case is passed. So with all of this uh, in, uh, in place, let's run the case one final time. Again, the web browser is opened. The login happens again, exactly as before. And we uh, navigate to create new change. The change is filled out. We read the change number first, fill it out. And then we look for that specific uh, change number. We can see we found the text chg something something and then uh, finally we found if we just look at the replay we can see we, we we found the created change just here so this was just a very short demonstration uh, hopefully it shows that there's nothing in the ServiceNow interface that cannot be automated uh, using a leap test um, so um, we look forward to seeing what you can all uh, do with this thank you for watching